we're going on a drive. I done a, I driven 22 miles already this morning, uh, running some errands running some errands and stuff and it runs good it was kind of shaking the steering wheel was kind of wobbly in the mo uh, when you get to like 30 40 and i think that's because of the wheels the wheels are unbalanced that's not engine related i went ahead and swapped the front wheels to the back and the back to the front so i'm doing that drive now and see if it makes if it's better if it is better <coughs> then the tires are probably unbalanced because when i bought the tires and wheels they were mounted together already and they have a sticky plate the sticky weights and I think those might have come off or some of them are not properly balanced. And the guy that sold those to me, he said they've been sitting for about almost six months or so. So it hasn't been used. So no big deal, easy to fix, but we're driving now. It almost sounds like it has a turbo. It sounds like it has, it almost sounds like a super turbo. So it's not shaking anymore. I don't feel that vibration no more. Yeah, the front end is not vibrating. So it means that my wheels just needs to be balanced. So I'm gonna take it to the shop this Monday and probably have them rebalance it. I'm gonna have them put the actual weights where you uh, crimp it onto the wheels and it doesn't fall off. Because those sticky, those, uh, those, those uh, sticky plates weights, they're nice, but they do have a tendency to fall off. So we're gonna go for a quick drive. We're, uh, drive's amazing, man. A lot of power, we're on fourth gear right now, doing 45 miles at 2200 RPM. Good, good Toyota. I checked the brake pads. The brake pads are kind of wearing out. They definitely need some replacement. So I'm gonna go buy some new brake pads. And I'm gonna do the brake pads, the upper ball joints, and the ball joint spacers, and the shocks all at once. So I don't wanna start doing one thing at a time. I'll wait till I get all those parts in and I'll, I'll knock the front end. The tie, rod, <coughs> the tie rods has been replaced already. Uh, they're not the stock ones, so they look good. They felt good. It wasn't there wasn't any place, so I'm not gonna replace the tie rods. CV axles are still good. Uh, they're just a little bit dirty, but the boots aren't ripped or anything like that, so we're not gonna replace CV axle. Man, it feels good. Engine temperature is good. Uh, oil pressure is good. Battery is good. I'm trying to burn off this gas too, because I think all this gas right here, uh -oh. the gas, the guy that I bought this from, I think he blew the head gasket last November, so it's already May, so five, six, seven, so it's been seven months since this thing has been driven, so that gas in here is probably six, seven months old, so that's why I want to burn it off. Oh, we got to overpass this rig. We're going up some hills right now too, so this will be a good test. Now we are running four, five, six gears. This truck is factory four, five, six. We don't fit the on a hill right now. Let me downshift to third gear. Fifty five. Fifty five, four thousand RPM, third gear. Yeah, so there's no more vibration, so it's definitely the wheels. That's good. I was hoping it I was hoping it wasn't tire rods or steering components. It's just the wheels, so I'm going to go get those wheels rebalanced, all of them four. So I just know that they're good, peace of mind, nothing big deal. I don't feel any shake in the back, so the back feels pretty good. <clears throat> Maybe I'll drive it like this for about 500 miles and then I'll reevaluate if I need to rebalance them, but so far it's good. The alignment's pretty good. Uh, the car doesn't drift or anything like that. I mean, it drifts a little bit to the driver, the passenger, but not super like erratic anything like that the exhaust sounds good too it's not super quiet it's not completely stock quiet <coughs> it does sound good though the engine sounds good it has that swirling noise that whirling noise it sounds like a it just sounds like a turbine I can't just I can't explain it we're on fifth gear, doing 55 at 2,500 RPM. 25, 2,250 RPM. Man. 
So that's what I wanted to test. I wanted to test 60 miles per hour and see if there's any vibration. And right now there's no, no vibration. It feels really good. The shocks doesn't feel like they're dead too. The front shocks doesn't feel that bad, but we'll go ahead and replace them as well. Man, this thing feels amazing. Fifth gear. 65. I don't want to go too fast. We're still, we're still breaking in this clutch. Pretty sure you can do all that, but I don't want to give it too much power. I'm a grandma drive it for about, like I said, 500 miles. But those 500 miles will come pretty quick because I'm gonna do a lot of driving in the city, make some driving videos for y'all. We're on fourth gear right now, doing 50, and like I said, just between uh, 22 to 50, 2,250 RPM. Those check engine light are just automatic stuff, so don't worry about that. The engine is fine the way it is. I might put like a black sticky uh, electrical tape and just cover that light up, just so it's not super annoying. Beautiful backcountry roads here in Alaska. I'm not sure if you guys can pick up the noise, the engine, but it sounds good. It sounds like a little, I don't know, it just sounds super cool. I just, my other three, four, when I did it two years ago, didn't sound like this. Maybe it's the cold air intake that's doing that noise. That's super awesome. I think it's the cold air intake. Give you guys a quick walk around. 1994 Toyota pickup. Stock height right now, 33 inch by 10.5 15s BFG KO2s. All terrain. Five speed. Manual doors, no sunroof. Ace and locking hubs. Three four swap. Yeah, she rides so, so good. Especially on this beautiful road out here. Brand new radiator. I need to build something to uh, kind of protect it right there. One little flaw right here on the cab, right where the door is from the pass owner. I don't know what exactly happened, but that's the only uh, ugly side, I guess. <coughs> there she is. I have to, uh, I have to get rid of these foam here. This is from the topper. This is that little styrofoam that they put on just to uh, dampen it so you can use a blow dryer or a heat gun and uh, it'll come off easily <laughs> she's not the prettiest but you know she's nice if you look far away and squint you know, a few scuff here and there the past owner did went ahead and repaint this he uh, hired someone to repaint it so but the truck is originally red it does need a new bumper. We're going to do that hopefully this month. One little dent right here, but 
Nothing too crazy. The 94, they have the third brake lights, 94, 95. That's how you uh, distinguish them really easy on the road. The manual doors and the uh, no sunroof makes it really nice. My last one that I did 3-4 was the SR5 package that has electronics, doors, and sunroof. It's nice to have that, but you know, the sunroof, you know, there's always a chance of leaking. If the window breaks one day, it's expensive to replace. So I like it to have manual. Manual is always nice. Carpet's decent. I plan to give it a little nice shampoo once the weather gets warmer. Uh, looks like one little mosquito got in here already. Yeah, super nice. I didn't check if that hit, that light bulb works yet, but I'll check that dome light here soon. Seats are in great shape. Um, it's a little bit dirty. You can see some dirt on it, but a little shampoo won't, can help that. <coughs> super, super nice. Nice dashboard. Windshield is typical Alaska windshield. Cup holder works. It is a five speed, four wheel drive. Man, 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 this is gonna be the dream truck. I can't sell this one, man. This one's a keeper. The only reason why I sold my last green truck my, that I had two years ago, that was the cleanest pickup that I ever owned. And that one had more miles, my 93. That one I did a 3.4 swap. And the only reason why I sold it was because that's when I got my first son. And I was like, man, this truck's not gonna work for me no more. Can't carry no little human baby in here. And that's why I sold it and got the Land Cruiser. And then now, two years later, I'm like, well, I can get myself another truck now. And now we're starting here again. So I found this, you know, two months ago. And I'm like, man, this is the perfect donor. I bought this truck originally with a blown head gasket. So it had a blown head gasket already. And that was perfect, you know. You get a better deal on it. And guess what? That just uh, forced you to do the swap. Because if it didn't have a blown head gasket and it had a 3.0, I probably would just be driving it now until, you know, it blows up or something. So a lot of people don't like 3.0, but I think they're the great trucks, you know. Drive them until they blow up, and then after that, swap it out. It's much easier to 3.4 swap when your truck is a 3.0 compared to a 22 RE. So just keep that in mind. These are called the wing windows. <coughs> Some trucks, they come with a full glass. And then this one here is divided into two piece. And we call it the wing window because when you open it, it just pops out like a little wing, kind of like a mirror. So let me show you guys that. I'm going to go ahead and tent the windows as well. So we'll go ahead and tent these windows in the summertime. Little rip right here. But no big deal. I'm going to get some tape and just tape it up. <laughs> this is it, guys. This is the truck, man. Took one month to uh, do the swap. And I've only had it since, what? I think uh, March. Bought it in the first week of March. Has 165,000. That's baby miles right there. And I think I might go ahead and replace this windshield just because I love her so much. I do want to get some new floor mats. <coughs> the floor mats that I have on my last 3-4 truck, they were the WeatherTech and they were, they were the perfect fitment. I need to find out what the part numbers are and order some of those. I have WeatherTech floor mats for my Land Cruiser and man, they are amazing. You know, it's made perfectly for your vehicle and they're nice and they just keep your vehicle clean. So... That's the one thing I will invest in, the, um, the floor mats and tint the windows. Tint the windows, do the floor mats, and I don't think we're going to do anything inside. I'm not a stereo guy, so I don't really care too much about stereo. This one has a Sony Bluetooth already installed when I bought it, but 
I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the faceplate and just store it away. Because even when you turn off the faceplate, it still glow lights, and I don't like that. I don't want any power to it. I don't listen to music when I drive or anything like that, so that's why I don't really use it anyways. It is a uh, it is a frame free rust like that. And I'll go ahead and show you guys the engine bay one more time. If you guys been following the swap, you guys seen plenty of the engine bays. This will just be a quick view of the engine bay. I'll go ahead and make a, another separate video dedicated just through the engine bay or the engine. And on that video, I'll talk about everything that I did and everything about the motor and everything, etc., etc. So if you guys are wanting more info on the engine and stuff like that, how I mounted everything up, we'll make another video on another day for that. But your typical 3.4, this donor engine came out of a 98 Forerunner 4x4 automatic. Like I say, went into a 5-speed 3.0. This is where the ECU is stored in, in this uh, plastic box right here, <coughs> waterproof. Well, fellas, that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you guys enjoy. We'll go ahead and make more videos discussing this truck here. I'll give you guys more reviews after our 500 miles, etc., etc. Thanks for watching and follow the Instagram, nuttynew underscore.